Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 13 of the Posh Push, here with Peterborough United in the Sky Bet Championship. Hopefully you guys are good. Today I'm going to be reviewing our start to the season and what a start it has been. Um, really could not have asked for it to go much better than it has. Um, first things first, I have done a few more transfer dealings um, and I actually got my wage budget increased hugely. Now um, I have kind of reinvested it here, there and everywhere. Um, I will try and find the thing for you guys now so you can see. But um, I asked my staff, here we go, I asked my chairman to increase the wage budget and um, we had about 150k a week I think we were spending, maybe a little bit less than that uh, and it was increased by about £75,000. So in turn for that, I have really reinvested that into the side. Uh, all in all, uh, the reinvestment that I've made I'm pretty happy with and I think it's going to leave us in a much, much stronger position. So anyway, looking at our fixtures here, you guys can see them. In our first game after the previous episode, which of course was the draw against Reading, we actually lost in the Capital One Cup 2-0. Really disappointing to bow out in this competition, particularly to Wickham. I mean, no disrespect to Wickham, a League 2 team however. And I was actually playing a very strong side. I wanted to go on a cup run. I wanted to do a bit like what we did last year in the FA Cup, um, in the League Cup potentially. But unfortunately for us, it just really... I, I can't really give you guys an excuse. Wickham took the chances that came our way and we were very poor. Um, you can see here John Taylor, Will Hughes, Kakuta and Asan Belonga who are kind of our, I guess, our attacking quartet just didn't do anything. It was a really odd performance. Fortunately from there we did look to mix things up and one thing that I immediately did following the Reading game, following the success of the counter-attacking tactic is start playing it and uh, it's Worked by and large very well playing our counter attacking football. Uh, first game of this kind of sequence in the league of wins uh, was against MK Dons, who, of course, last season were a big kind of promotional rival with us. We beat them 2 1, three hours somber longer with our goals. Uh, we played really well this game. Uh, granted, MK Dons had their fair share of game, uh, fair share of chances. It was close. Uh, there you can see our first goal, three air, scoring from a fantastic ball in by Bostwick. And um, so yeah, it's been really good. Boswick's been playing pretty well in centre midfield and I've made a few new additions to the centre and midfield area with the new money that kind of came in through the wage budget changes and just opportunities that were presented my way. And I'm really impressed with the team we now have. Um, last season, I was trying to make signings for the championship. Players like Jacob Mellis, like Briggs, were players that I knew could do a job in the championship for me and that's why I was keen to bring them in on freeze. Um and they really have done well. And then so far, our new signings have really stepped up to the mark. I'd say our team is actually a top half championship team right now. But this counter-attacking tactic we've got has been working absolutely superbly for us. I think one of the big reasons for that is actually just because um, teams come to play Peterborough at home or away for any matter. And they look to attack against us. And they leave themselves very exposed. And one of our main strengths is our creative outlet. Uh, out wide and our pace in the final third uh, with our players and that is benefiting us massively uh, kind of part of that with how efficient and how effective we have been from set pieces um, it's seen us really surge up the table our only defeats this so far this year has come against Huddlesfield um, of course we drew the first game of the season against Reading that was a live come besides that we've gone on a winning run here um, here is the game against Wolves which preceded the MK Dons game you can see we actually won this one 2-0 uh, this was a really good performance I touched upon last episode how I needed Will Hughes really to step up to the mark. So far he's done that. He actually won the Championship Young Player of the Month for the month of August. Asan Belonga actually won Player of the Month as well, so that worked really well in our favour. And um, you can see why he won it here. He got a hat-trick in this game against Middlesbrough as we ran out 40 victors away from home again. Just being clinical, we hit teams on the break. We didn't have to have too much of the ball, but we looked to exploit the areas out wide, turn to players like Jacob Mellis, a player who, as I mentioned, I signed last year. And despite his injury last year, he's come back this year and he's been in fine form in the league. Three assists and a 7.68 average rating kind of epitomises that, I guess. And um, 
as you can see, Asombolonga is back in the Congo side as well. So that's really good for him. And he's improving a lot. And he's a player who's going to have to be huge for us this year. But you can see so far, six goals, two assists in seven games. I'm not sure if he'll ever be able to surpass his kind of tally last season of, I think it was 41 goals in all competitions. But if he can chip in with just a, a slice of that, uh, I'm going to be very, uh, kind of very happy. And I think we're going to benefit greatly from that. So anyway, one thing that you'll notice is in a lot of these games, we've scored a fair few goals. Not too many clean sheets. Uh, and one game that I was a little bit concerned about was this one against Bristol City. Again, we were just clinical with our chances. Uh, Bristol City, of course, won the playoffs in League One last year. You guys may remember for a spell at the start of last season. They really were the big team who we were having to, I guess, fight against uh, at the top of the table. But we did run out 3-1 victors in this game. Will Hughes getting a goal here. As you can see, we took a lead early on. Um, coming up from the left-hand side, Briggs to Hendrick. And I believe, if I remember correctly, it was just one long back post cross, Kakuta, um, who, of course, cutting in on his left foot. Um, he, you know, he's going to do some work for us there. And he's been very good, actually, Kakuta. That was his first ever goal for the club. Um, but considering against Reading, he, he maybe was the letdown of the side in terms of he didn't really take the chances that came his way. Uh, so far, so good um, for the rest of the season, I guess. His performances have pleased me. He's looking very lively. And um, he, he's looking like a very good loney from Chelsea. Uh, Mario, on the other hand, you guys may remember Mario, the Croat central midfielder. Uh, given a few of the free transfers that I've made, which we'll come on to very shortly, and a few of the kind of paid transfers as well for that matter, that I've made, um, it's kind of made him slightly surplus to requirements, but he's kind of a useful player just to have in case we need him. That was Will Hughes's goal there. That was a great long-range effort to give us a 2-1 lead. And uh, about 20 minutes from the end, we got one more goal, this time from a set piece, and Zakuani was there to bundle the ball into the back of the net from six yards. So today's game is going to be against Newcastle. It's a very big game for us in terms of it's our first time playing against a team who were relegated from the Premier League last year. Newcastle find themselves in about 8th place, I believe. So there's going to be a little bit of pressure on them to go out and get a result, particularly against us. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of pressure in terms of if we win against Newcastle, it'll give me real hope and optimism going into the rest of the season that we can kind of maintain the level of performances that we've done so far this year. Um, it's kind of worth noting, I guess, that so far this season we've not played any of the massive teams in the league, but we've played against teams on a similar skill level to us, and we are, you know, really challenging up there. And we've not slipped up, with the exception of the Huddersfield game. We've not lost a game against a lesser team or a team that'd expect us to win. But anyway, here's the Huddersfield game. Uh, you can see here Tom Lawrence scoring in the fifth minute for them. This is another game where they had more possession, but we created more chances on the break. Unfortunately for us, however, Asom Bolonga just wasn't in form. So anyway, looking at the league table, as you can see, we are after seven games in second place with really good goal difference. As I touched upon before, we've not played too many of the huge teams yet. Of the teams around us at the top, the only one that we've really played is Wolves, who we beat 2-0 at home. That was a good result there. So in terms of our actual team performances and how the players have actually been playing in the last five, Asom Belonga and Will Hughes, as I mentioned, winning Player of the Month and Young Player of the Month each, um, have really kind of stepped up to the mark. Jacob Mellis has put in some good performances. In terms of where the goals are coming from, uh, it's just Asom Belonga with six. Uh, Kakuta, who I mentioned, has been obviously in on loan from Chelsea, has uh, contributed as well very well, two goals and two assists in six. Uh, but by and large, it's just been a very, very, very solid team performance. Zakuani at the back's been a really good player when we've called upon him. He's played five of the seven games in the league. And the centre-back, um, who of course was here when I joined the club, is um, proven to be a valuable asset to the team. A few other players like Boswick and Friere have also chipped in. So in terms of the transfers, because I have to mention these a fair bit, lots of these are fairly recent. There's been an international break, so they've not had too much game time, although a few of them have had their chances, I guess, in the first team. Uh, but the first signing we made since last episode was this guy, uh, Dimitri... Is it Dimi I guess that is Dimitri Verkhovzov. I, I probably said that wrong. Verkhovzov. I, I tried. He, he's Belarusian, I want to say. Are you Belarusian? You are Belarusian, see, I got that right. Assuming assuming someone from Belarus is Belarusian. But anyway, um, where am I going with this? This guy's just a loney, 
paying four grand of his wages a week. He's a solid centre back. He just adds to the numbers at centre back, really. Although he is a very good player for at this level, his contract actually runs out at his club in approximately three months. Uh, we've got him on loan till the end of his actual contract. I have got the option to approach him, but he's wanting pretty substantial wages, so we're going to wait and see how he performs during the rest of his loan. The next player who I brought in was Emil Liska. Uh, this guy is a Slovenian, I want to say, but it might be Slovakian. Uh, it's Slovakian. My bad. Uh, a Slovakian youngster. His agent actually offered him to me. You know, you get the typical... Um, agent name offers and in this case it was Liska free transfer the 17 year old is a very good player you can see we're actually his first club as well so he's just been generated into the game as kind of a youngster who exists um, I guess to pad out numbers but he's a very good player can improve a lot in the future four and a half star ability his specific weakness is injury proneness but I'm hoping that he's going to be able to put that past him and hopefully he can improve. And He's the kind of player who I've brought in on a free transfer. He's on £800 a week. He's a pretty good 17-year-old. Um, worst case scenario is I lose pennies on him, essentially, from paying his wages every week. Best case scenario is he maybe develops and becomes an insane player or he becomes a really good player who it becomes profitable to sell. So anyway, I did make two monetary signings during this window, and we did actually make a few sales, which I'll cover too. Uh, the first of which was another Derby signing. We've actually signed three players in total now from Derby who were relegated last year. The first, of course, being Will Hughes. Uh, this player, Jeff Hendrick, has joined us. As I mentioned, I did strengthen up the central midfield area. This guy's a really, really strong central midfielder. We picked him up for a pretty decent price, 1.1 million. Um, if you ask me, that's really decent. Uh, you can see last season in the championship, he kind of struggled with Derby. He's really going to be a second choice option who I can look to bring on. He's real good physicals, meaning he's the kind of player who I can chuck on maybe 20 minutes from the end and really expect him to make a change. Uh, we are also training him, or we're well, not actually, but we should be training him to play centre attack in mid just to give us additional men in the centre. Next player, David Edwards. Actually, another central midfielder. This guy, another very good player, joined us on a free transfer. He was released at the end of last season by Wolves. No one has taken him on. I've decided to give him a chance. He's a very good player at this level. He's only on £10,000 a week. Looking at his coach report, you can see here, good player for most championship players, uh, for most championship teams. And he finishes behind Hendrick and Edwards in kind of uh, the overall ratings and how he matches up against the rest of our team. So anyway, the last transfer was Johnny Russell, uh, a player who I've brought in from Derby County again. This is a very exciting signing. I think Johnny Russell, really good young winger, is where I'm going to be deploying him. Uh, his crossing is less than to be desired. I can't remember if I set up his training. I didn't. Well, let's do that now. Um, but uh, he's a very good player. He has pace. He actually has a good attacking presence in terms of he's got the ability to finish. He's got some good off-the-ball stats. Really solid physicals as well. And a good determination as well, which I like in my players. He can play up top or on either wing, and that's a very valuable asset for us to have. I'm going to be looking to retrain him to play at a left attacking mid, which I believe we are doing. We are indeed. Uh, and he's going to be a very op good option there. He kind of takes the uh, place of another player, which is Delfonso, who we sold to Wolves. If I just compare these two guys, you'll be able to see the difference uh, in them and why I was so happy with the deals that I did. So, um, yeah, Delfonso left for 1.4 million, as you can see there. Um, he's a good player. I'm just going to compare him to Johnny Russell really quick. So Johnny Russell actually cost a tiny bit more money, uh, 200k. But in terms of the actual improvements he offers, it, it's very noticeable. Obviously, the wages are vastly different. But um, I think Johnny Russell has a little bit more promise in terms of as a long-term player. Uh, he's a very well-rounded off player. He actually has a little bit of potential yet to fulfil. However, uh, given his advancing years, I say advancing years, he's 24. But given the fact he's kind of coming to that period as a player where he's going to not quite improve as much as um, he might otherwise do... Um, He's, I think he's going to be a very good long-term player for us. You can see he has some potential, could become a good Premier League striker in the future. Of course, we're looking to deploy him out on the wing. You'll notice three and a half star is a leading championship player in my team. And if I show you my team, there are a lot of three and a half star players. So from that perspective, I feel like this transfer window, thanks to the additional wage budgets, I've really been able to add some good strength to the team without complete, completely kind of reinventing the wheel, I guess, in many ways. You look at our team and uh, by and large, you know, it consists of similar players who played with us last year. You've got the likes of the old cot, um, 
Boldwick, Briggs, who is still here, obviously. Friere retains his spot in the side. Mellis is still there. Sombolong is still there. Really, we've just been adding a few players who um, improve the overall quality of our side. So anyway, as I mentioned, we are going to go into today's Newcastle game. For some reason, I decided to start recording before I got to the Newcastle game, but we will just plod on real quick. Uh, but so far, so good. Um, I talked about last episode how playoffs was beyond kind of my wildest expectations. Thanks to the additional wage budget and also the signings that I've brought in, I'd really like to see us push for a playoff spot at a minimum now, particularly when you consider the start we've had. Um, as I mentioned, however, we haven't played against the big, big, big teams in the championship. We've not played against the teams recently coming down from the Premier League. And so um, that's going to be... Uh, kind of the real test for us. We've been getting good results against teams who maybe you consider mid-table, maybe playoff candidates in some cases in the championship. Uh, but right now there's got to be a, a, I guess, a point that we prove here against Newcastle that we can compete with the very big teams in this league. Um, the championship is a very close league and it's kind of Newcastle are eighth in the league at the moment. They've got two defeats. Um, two draws and three wins, I believe, from their first few games. So they're struggling. Um, but we, we need to show that we're no pushovers here. We're going to be playing away from home. I'm going to be sticking with the counter-attacking tactic. The chances are, because of Newcastle's very big reputation in relation to Peterborough's, um, they're going to be very inclined to go on the attack. And I'm going to be looking to um, hit um, them on the break when we can. Uh, Palisic is... Uh, loan end soon do I want to extend it I'm probably not going to although he is a free player essentially so it might just be worth picking him up to be an extra man see if see if he'll go back on loan for us make it another three month loan um, but no uh, it, this is a test here this is going to be interesting who is Newcastle's manager right now it's Brian McDermott you can see here they've kept a lot of their good players um, Newcastle. They've still got Krull in goal. Colaccini is a good player who they still have. They've got uh, Embuya, who of course was actually a player who I was looking at at one point. Unfortunately, his wages proved to be a bit of a stumbling block. Uh, but all in all, they've got some pretty kind of scary players, I guess, who we're going to be coming up against. But I have faith that if we can take the chances that fall our way, and perhaps um, Newcastle slip up a little bit, that we can do very well here. So I'm just going to check this team. Bob in goal, of course. Alcock at right back. He's done very well, Alcock. He's just signed a new deal at the club as well. You can see he's improved a little bit, although he's not got a, much left to grow into. Uh, at centre-back, Zakuani, who's, as I mentioned, has been playing very well for us, alongside Jack Baldwin, uh, the centre-back, with a load of promise about him. He has been playing very well this year, a 7.07 .07 rating for a 21-year-old playing centre-back in the Championship. Um, he's very impressive. In midfield, we are going to go with Boswick and Mellis, I think. In fact, I'm going to play Jeff Hendrick ahead of Mellis. Um, then you can see a higher up the park, Kakuta, Hughes and Friere. I'm pretty happy with that team. Freire has had a little bit of an off-season so far. Only two goals. He's made a fair amount of appearances as well. One player I'm a little bit disappointed hasn't had, um, I guess, more of a chance this year has been Will Keane. He's just kind of been ousted from the side. He's a player who I do want to give some kind of first-team football to, but right now, given the form that we're in, it's I'm finding it very difficult to drop players uh, and kind of give, I guess... Uh, other players a chance through rotation just because I, I need to keep winning. I am going to give Johnny Russell here his um, I think this is going to be his second game at the club I'm going to play him on the right wing cutting inside just because Freire occupies that left wing spot and he's done very well uh, just speaking of players who haven't had much of an opportunity, obviously, as I mentioned, Will Keane's been one. Mendes Lang's been another. He was great for us last year in the championship, uh, sorry, in the championship in League One but right now he's struggling to find a spot in the team. His contract runs out at the end of the year. I've still yet to decide if I'm going to retain his services. Um, there are a few contracts which I have extended. But uh, extended. But as you can see here, there is a fair amount of players whose contracts run out at the end of this year who um, I'm yet to kind of make a definite decision on their futures on. I think um, Bostwick is one who I'm probably going to look to retain. Bob and Zakuani as well are on my radar um, it, it's difficult at this point because I've not got obviously I've got a fairly healthy wage budget but I can't really afford to use it all because of the way the club's finances are set up 
um, we are going to make a loss even with the kind of wages that I've been given permission to use. And so um, I'm a bit tentative to start handing out increased contracts because these are players who obviously signed when we were in League One. And so they're looking to have, um, I guess, their payments increase now that we're playing in the Championship. The issue for me is is that if I start offering them contracts now, um, we might get to a situation where at the end of the season, uh, we, uh, we could well be promoted into the Premier League and I'm suddenly left with a no- load of players who have recently signed contracts who just simply aren't good enough for this level. Off the bat here, Newcastle on the attack. We've weathered that storm. Can we start to break now? Sombolonga, use your pace, son. Use your pace, bury it. Bang! It's 1-0. That is what we've done well this year. We have taken the first chance that has come our way. Brit Asombolonga using some pace, a defensive uh, error. I'm not sure who it was. There it was Vossa. And um, Brit Asombolonga buries his seventh goal of the season. And we go ahead at St. James's Park. Or the St. Is it the Sports Direct Arena? I, I, it's St. James's Park in my heart. Anyway, what can we do here? Hendrick. Sombolonga, go on, my son, go on. It's two boys. Four minutes in, Peterborough showing why we are in the promotion race. Newcastle, a very strong side, and right now we are looking great. Hendrick, there, of course, the defensive midfielder, kind of player ish, who we signed from Derby, showing what he's made of the Irish international. A player who hasn't started too much for us. I mentioned earlier when I showed him that he's a bit of an impact player. Right now, he is contributing very well in this game from the off which is not what I've brought him in to do but that is great now we need to keep our heads and defend here there's a chance headed away can we look to break now let's go boys let's use the pace that we have in the final third free air Hendrick Boswick getting in each other's ways but we get the ball out Hughes a somber longer bang oh that was a chance Elliot parries it wide. That was a chance for a first half hat trick for a somber longer, and Baldwin hits the side netting. Wow, we have f- we've come out the tr- out of the blocks flying here. Newcastle seem a little bit stunned. We've got another chance here. Free air. Baldwin, he's been tackled, but that was another clear cut chance. We are all over them in every department. Can we get the ball back in? We can't. Now I've got to be a little bit kind of careful against the counter attack. Fortunately, nothing's going to come of it. Briggs with some nice defending there. I'm a very happy bunny right now. Um, we need to keep our heads. A third goal here could really kill off the game early. If they score again, there's going to be some momentum Newcastle's way. But what I was going to say was, I, I, I can't quite believe how well we've hit the ground running this season. But um, kind of this has been a fine example of how we've been winning games against teams who are willing just to throw men forward. A somber longer scores his hat-trick. Wow, 30-minute hat-trick against Newcastle at St. James's Park. There is not a lot I can say about this other than this is... It's epitomised our team's performances. Um, Asombolonga was great last year. I said earlier this show, episode, actually, he might not get 41 goals this season. He's on nine. And we've only played eight games in the league after this, I think. So may, maybe he has a point to prove here. But what a start. I could not have dreamed for a better start to this game. Boswick... Keeper spills it. Some longer. He scored four. Oh my gosh. What a weird game. We've had seven clear cut chances after 30 minutes. Moswick with the set piece. Keeper drops it. Will Hughes can just kick it into his shins and it falls to a Somba longer. Who scores four in 30 minutes. This is, this is crazy. What is this? This is not a good Newcastle performance. I think it's safe to say at this point. Hughes. Sombolonga, surely he's not going to get five in the first half. That would be just stupid. Boswick, don't get sent off. <laughs> That's the last thing I need right now. Go on. Go on, boys. Yeah, I don't know what has happened to Newcastle here. You're probably wondering that as well. I, I've looked at them on this save. I can't quite work out where it went wrong for them. They got relegated last season, of course, which was their um, obviously first season of the save, which is pretty unusual anyway. But they still have a very strong team. Russell makes it five. That's his first goal for the club, the Derby signing out wide. He is already showing what he is made of. This is crazy. What? Like, 
are they they're not playing a weakened team. They've got some good players playing here. Ryan Taylor playing for them. He's very strong in this save as a full back. Embuya is a very strong centre back, especially for in the championship. Stuart Downing. Good player. Not not crazy, don't get me wrong, but still a good player. Gary Huper as well can finish and would be a, considered a good championship player. Crazy. I can't I can't actually believe it. I can't believe what I'm seeing. But I'm not gonna complain. It's five nil at half time. That's, I'm very happy, boys. Let's go in the second half. Show me what you're made of. Free air, go on. Straight from kickoff. Oh imagine. Thirteen seconds from kickoff, we could have made it six. This is ruthless. I kind of want 10. I've got to be honest. It's not going to happen. I was a little bit worried, given how good our form had been in the league, that I was going to come into this episode and lose, and it would just kind of be all very anticlimactic, and I'd be kicking myself for not live coming when we were in really good form. But to say we lost in our last game against Huddersfield, we have bounced back with a bang here, and we are looking just so threatening. We're looking scary. Russell... A son belongers in the middle. Hendrick, Hughes, Friere. And it's gone out for a corner. We've had 10 clear cut chances after 50 minutes. I think my record clear cut chances is 14 combined by both teams. So 10 after 60 minutes is just unheard of. We will make a few changes. We might as well save a few legs at this point. We'll give, give David Edwards a game. Um, hmm, I don't want to change too much, but I do want to kind of give some players a chance. Let's bring in Calcutta for free air. We'll go with a double change for now. Don't want to make a third sub. You guys know what FM cheese is like. It can bite back. But anyway, we've been absolutely rampant here. There's still time for more as well, which is just the most scary bit of it all. Calcutta, Hughes, Russell. Russell scores. That is 6 0 against Newcastle away. Wow. I, I, I'm i stunned. I wish I knew what to say. I wish I knew quite how to construe how this result feels, but it's that's not even the right word, Jack. It doesn't even matter. I'm just flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. If you don't know what that means, it means I'm like in a state of shock. Surely not seven. I can't believe it was five at half time. Go on. Kakuta, Hughes, Will Hughes, Kong. Oh, he's missed it. There's a chance Kakuta. Oh, he's tackled. So close yet so far. This is us playing on counter, scoring six. That's the most scary bit about this all. But anyway, we are looking like we are going to finish there at 6-0. I don't think there's going to be time for another. But wow, I mean, what a performance. A Somber longer, grabbing four. Just a crazy team performance. Also good to see um, Russell out on the right grab himself a brace on his second ever game. What a result. Will Hughes as well, getting three assists. I talked about him last episode saying he had to step it up. He has stepped it up there. Look at that. We dominated Newcastle. Not a single clear-cut chance. We had 12. On another day, we easily could have got the goals into double figures there. Hey guys, this is going to sound really clumsily added into the end of the episode, but after I finished recording, it dawned on me that I'd actually got Brian McDermott sacked from Newcastle. So you can see here, following the 6-0 defeat, he has been sacked. So RIP Brian McDermott, I'm really sorry, it wasn't my fault. Wow, okay guys, well I'm going to wrap things up there, but I don't think there's a lot that needs to be said. I mean, just look at the scoreboard. In terms of where that sees us in the league... One point behind Brentford now after eight games with a better goal difference thanks to the six there. A Sombolonga also leading the top goal scorer chart. Will Hughes also now on the assist chart after getting three in one game. But anyway, yeah, going to wrap things up there, guys. If you've enjoyed, as always, smash the like button. Greatly appreciated. Maybe let me know what you think of this result. Maybe, actually, here's the thing. If you've got a weird kind of situation, so for example, Newcastle getting relegated year one is pretty unusual. Maybe you can outdo that. Let me know what the weirdest thing you've seen in FM is in terms of a team maybe falling from grace or maybe a tiny team going up to the top. Um, but yeah, wow, we have just absolutely destroyed Newcastle's goal difference there. 
I feel a little bit guilty. Um, yeah, guys, going to wrap things up there. If you've got any comments, as always, leave them down below. Greatly appreciated. Your support on the last few episodes has been absolutely superb. Glad to see you're enjoying this series. I'm enjoying making these videos for you guys. And other than that, I'm going to wrap things up here. It's me, Jack, and I'm out. I'll talk to you guys in a bit.